Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day out there. Uh, today in uh, today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different uh, compared to all the past videos. And instead of building out an application and coding a bunch of stuff, I uh, wanted to use this opportunity to kind of show you guys a sneak peek of the, or one of the next applications we'll build together, uh, namely the Twitter app. And I wanted to show you guys sort of my thought processes as to what I look for before I uh, write a single line of code. Like how do I mentally break down an application so that I can build it out easier? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my version of what the Twitter app looks like. And I'm gonna break it down for you guys uh, as to how to more easily manage how to build out this application. So on my simulator, we have the Twitter home feed. Ho hopefully you guys are more uh, familiar with what this looks like on your phone. And again, this is something that we'll build together later in the future. And if I scroll down the list, scroll up the list, uh, what you'll notice is a rendering of a bunch of cells that represent perhaps users up top and then uh, individual tweets at, at the bottom right here. And what I noticed right off the bat is that this list is currently made up of two sections. The top section up here is the recommended user section. Uh, Twitter usually gives you a list of people they think you're, or you might be interested in following. And inside of the top list, we have a header component that says who to follow. And at the very bottom, we have this show me more footer component. And everything in between these two views uh, are repeating cells uh, that represents each one of those users that we were talking about earlier, these recommended users, right? So if I were to break down this uh, even further and kind of uh, note what I would need to represent each one of these users, I would kind of break it down like this, right? So if I type here this user model object, let's just say model user, and the first thing that we need for the user is starting from the left, is some kind of image, perhaps profile URL, which is some kind of string perhaps. And then next we have this name right here. And usually this is probably something called a display name. Down below we have a username, which is also a string right there. And lastly on the bottom, we have sort of a uh, bio, which is the information the user uh, uh, decides to show as sort of the summary of what the uh, the Twitter login represents. So that's kind of a representation of what our user model would look like. And I would build out the class to represent this actual model object. Okay. So that's for this top section up here. And let me just drag this out of the way. If I scroll down right here, You'll notice that this is a completely different section like entirely and one thing that's different about it is that it doesn't contain a header up here and neither does it contain a footer at the very bottom so this is a uh, different section but the same pattern sort of applies everything that's kind of in between the i guess the missing header and the missing footer is a repeating list of of stuff right in this case, that stuff is an individual tweet message and the tweet contains sort of uh, something very similar, right? So if I were to drag back this guy right here and let me focus on this individual cell. And if I were to, let's say, come down here inside of my little notepad file, I have this thing called a tweet, which is a tweet like that. And then let's see, what do I want to mark down as my tweet? Well, usually a tweet has a user, which is this above user here, and it contains the information such as the display name and also the user name already inside of uh, this user object. But what it's missing now is the actual tweet message text right there. So I would just have a message text property on the tweet. And then for some of these messages right here, you'll notice that uh, it contains an image and some cells or some tweets do not. So in my tweet uh, model, I would perhaps have a, a property on here called message, perhaps image 
URL, and this would be a uh, an optional string representing uh, an image if there is one, and obviously null if there isn't any. Okay, so that's how we would break down this uh, this home feed. Okay, so now that we understand how the home feed works, let's dive one level deeper into the user profile page. Okay, so back on the home feed right here, we have all of these cells, right? And to get to a user profile, you can either click on one of these uh, names in the tweet text itself, or we can actually click on one of these uh, profile images. So right here, we have a list just like this. And as you scroll up and down, uh, something's happened with the header and the tweets on the bottom scroll up. So that's the behavior that we would expect from the Twitter app, right? And what you'll notice is that uh, just like the home feed in the previous screen here, we also have a same pattern where there's a header and then there's a list of stuff that's being rendered uh, underneath the header. So let's go back to the user profile screen. Um, the header in this case contains the uh, the image for the user, the name, username, and then some text right here, uh, some other information about this user, and also how much uh, followers this user has, along with how many people they are following. Uh, along with that, we have a an array of tweets down here. So this section up here is it's a little trick. Uh, some of the uh, code that's involved in getting this to work like that and to actually blur it out. Uh, there is some trickery involved, but I'll teach you guys how to do that uh, later as well. But first of all, uh, let's kind of mark this up with what the data structure really needs to be to uh, display all of this information properly, or most of it anyhow. So going back to this nice little notepad guy right here, uh, what we actually need to do is not to introduce another um, model object, but we need to further flesh out what this user uh, contains. And basically the idea is when you click on one of these uh, images here, it actually just shows you more information as to what this user uh, object is. And that means uh, the user object needs to contain a little bit more information right here. So the first uh, additional information is this iOS developer instructor sort of field. So we can call it perhaps something like description string. And then we will move down one line, which is this location right here. So location as a string like that. And then what else do we need? Well, on the right of the location, we have the actual link for the user's website. So that is something I will call website perhaps as a string. And then finally, we have these two numbers right below. And we'll just call that following like that. And we'll use an int to represent following. Um, if you want it to be even more precise, you can perhaps use a, a u a u int, which is an unsigned integer. And right here, uh, we'll move on and we'll specify followers like this. Let's see followers, if I can spell that correctly. And then this is also an unsigned int. I think it's a lowercase i. Maybe it's uppercase i. Can't remember exact, exactly what it is. Perhaps it's just uint like that. Okay, and what else do we need? Well, basically, um, the user right here contains a list of tweets as well. So you can actually say this right here, tweets is an array of tweet objects like that. Now you just have to be a little careful because um, a tweet does contain a user. So uh, in certain cases, this might cause a cyclical uh, uh, relationship between these two objects. So be careful of that. All right, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and hopefully you have a better idea as to how to further break down your applications and how to, how to kind of simplify things before you actually write one single line of code. And remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. 
Um, in the next video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to very easily and quickly build out these types of list views using a very simple library that I use. Until then, keep on coding and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.